Not even a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, call to order the um oh, it's called the old name. The uh, combined committee of the whole of Men and Finance, Public Works, Environmental Services, and Facilities meeting. Uh, so we'll start at 6 30, and then it's about 7 17. Um, uh, next item of, uh, on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. If I can have someone present to move the agenda, moved by Councillor Chris Ford, seconded by Councillor Wadi Smail. Any changes to the agenda before we begin, folks? No changes, good. So I'll call the question. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Everyone unanimous. Uh, number three, disclosure of pecuniary interest or the general nature thereof. Does anyone have any um, interest to disclose today? Hearing none, uh, we're going on to four, which is business arising from previous committee of the whole meeting minutes. Uh, if there are any, does anyone have any business arising from our previous committee meeting minutes? Right side of the table, none. Left side of the table, nothing. No delegations and presentations. No discussion items. And we're straight to action and information items. Moving to seven A, which is the Bait Fuel Bass Tournament. Heard a nice presentation a while back. Not a while back. Last week, I believe, wasn't it? That's great. And uh, Mr. CAO or someone on staff, can we give us just a quick brief you know, highlight of that background? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll uh, turn that over to the uh, manager of Parks Rex and uh, Recreation Facility to provide that update. Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, as the uh, action item uh, indicates, um, Mr. Hooper, from the Bait and Fuel Fit and Derby Association uh, was present last week via Zoom, looking for support from the municipality to run one of their one day fishing derbies in late August. Um, it went on to indicate that there were a total of five events that were gonna be uh, held along the North River and they were hoping to potentially piggyback to have a Saturday, Sunday one, Saturday in uh, Cardinal on the 26th of August. And the Sunday, I think they were looking to have it in uh, Morseburg. Um, I did uh, reach out and speak to Mr. Hooper this week uh, to find out a little bit more of the logistics. Um, I indicated to him that we would be able to, as far as parking of the vehicles, we would be able to use the old arena parking lot to house probably between 35 and 45 trucks and trailers there. And then the rest of them could be Put down where the old marina used to be up on the up on the uh, the hill. There's quite a few uh, areas that we can park full trucks and trailers. Um, that would also then give us the uh, ability to have it open for the general public to use too. Because on an average Saturday uh, over the weekend during the summer, there's ten or fifteen boats there. So what they would do is they would uh, leave start at fifty minute increments at six a.m. And they would send their boats out accordingly, and then they would come back in between three and four fifteen um, at the end of the day. So during that time, we would just social media wise indicate that our boat launch is, is not available, and indicate when it is available. Then, then that way, the transition of getting those boats in and out of the uh, of the area will, will be good, and then will impact our the general residents wanting to use it as well. Um, I suggested that they use the picnic pavilion as the area to weigh in. It's a little bit uh, bigger of an area as opposed to being over where the congestion would be with all the boats and trailers. Um, and he thought that was a good idea. Um, it also would, I'm sure, would attract a lot of residents wanting to go down at that weigh in to see exactly what was caught. So um, I've indicated uh, that to shuttle the participants to and from the the old uh, arena parking lot down to the water that the municipality could provide a bus um, and shuttle people back and forth. We can also use that to shuttle residents that just want to go down, potentially park at the arena or at the ballpark area. And, and then we can shuttle those people down throughout the day or late afternoon during the, uh, the weigh in time. Um, Rough approximately uh, cost for the bus would be between $1,500 and $2,000 for the day. 
and that really would be the only impact that the municipality would have. Um, we would have staff there, but that would be just part of their regular procedures are, are being called in on a weekend. So there wouldn't really be a lot to do. Um, we would have barricades set up in different areas for parking and no parking and what have you, and have all that illustrated and uh, designated and put it on social media so everyone is made well aware, well in advance uh, of the event on that day. Um, so <laughs> the recommendation is that the uh, municipality supports uh, and approves the, the Boston uh, Consulting Group to run their one day fishing derby and carnival on the 26th and to direct staff to work with Mr. Hooper and his group to facilitate and arrange for the anglers for parking and the general public. Good. Thank you, Facilities Director. Um, I'm going to open it up for discussion. So who wants to go first? Go ahead. I, go ahead. You go ahead, sir. I just have one question. Like You said you're going to close the boat ramp that day? Uh, no, uh, through the chair to the deputy mayor. What I said, we would close it during the time that those boats are being launched. Okay. So between 6 a.m. and 7.15, 7.30. And we'll put them back in. Yeah, so from 7.30 to 3.30, the boat launch would be open for the general public. And then after they're done loading at the end, so then it would open up again at, at mm -hmm. about quarter to five. So from quarter to five on, it would be open for the public to be able to come back in. Good. So if you go out during the day, you can't bring your boat back in. Uh, general public back. Yeah, through the mayor to uh, counter smell. Yeah, you will be able to during that time span. There'll just be an hour and a half window to, in the morning and in the afternoon that you won't be able to bring your boat back in because they'll be unloading and loading all the the bass boats at that time. Uh, okay, so through the chair. Uh, so, as far as parking for the regular uh, residents who use the boat launch, they'll be able to park those in place, or are they also going to be parking further away for shuttle and everything? Uh, through the mayor to uh, Councilor Ward, we would utilize, we would have some spots down at the water. Typically, we would leave that open for our, our regular users. The the bass boats and their trailers would be moved off to the Cardinal Arena parking lot area and up on the hill uh, where the old marina used to be. Good. Yeah. Uh, and then just last but not least, it's more of a question, I guess, a general question. Um, you know, and I know we talked about use of social media to try and offer it as you know this is happening. And, and I think we're so finding from some people, I think we've got a letter today that explains it as well. You know, um, I think we hopefully by the next August can find some other methods as well to make sure we can get people's attention, I think, because I think that's that's I'm not being told by some other people that that's lacking, but uh, we can work on that, I think. So just just a note. Okay. Yeah. I just want to come. That's a great opportunity for the community, you know. That's right. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Back on this, take the people like Winona Nikki and Scorpion and yeah. the Legion. Yeah. 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 If, if the guy would have been here and not remote, I would have hugged him. I think he would be dead. <laughs> we should get a chance to have it. Can you find a couple more of these guys? I, uh, <laughs> I only have one question. And and uh, I was hoping somebody would ask it, they haven't. So, um, and I, I think I know the answer, but I still want to make sure that it's that it's on the record. So they're going to load uh, at our docks, the, the trucks and the boat and the lot, uh, the trucks and the trailers are going to leave and go to the old arena. The boats are going to stage and they're going to leave in 15 minute intervals. I'm assuming that, you know, I've, I've watched a few of these stagings and when they leave and the best part of them leaving is you know, you see these boats go from zero to 70 miles an hour in, in a heartbeat. I'm going to assume that they're not going to stage in the canal, that they're going to leave the canal area with no wake and stage in front of the Legion or something like that uh, so that they can leave from, from the riverside, not from the canal side. Right. Through the Mary, yes, that will be coordinated. Uh, the idea was when I spoke with Mr. Hooper last week, uh, once council approves, if they approve the, the event, uh, he will coordinate a time to come down and meet with me and we'll meet on site and, and go over a lot of log the logistic things. And that would be one of them, having the boats all go out in front of the area, in, in front of the, uh, the Legion and the pavilion area, the canteen area, and that's where they would leave, their stage area would leave from. And they wouldn't be ripping out through the actual canal area. Right. And, I, and I know that the, that, that the, the, the fishermen, the, the boaters are uh, fantastic 
stewards of their environment. But I just, for residents, when they hear this, I don't think they, if they've ever watched a bass uh, tournament start, could cause some concern for them if if they think they're going to stage in the canal. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> I just want to want it on the record. So yeah, they're not. Um, wow, fantastic. I think it's pretty clear consensus. Um, I know Mr. Hooper was looking. Uh, you know, to make sure that the council was going to support it, but I think it's pretty clear on the table that on the council meeting that that would be the case. So. All right, so uh, moving on, is there a recommendation? Yes, there is. So I need somebody to move and to so move. second. Moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Delvay. I almost got it right that time, Steve. Uh, I need a seconder. Uh, Councillor Joe Martel. Any further comments? Nothing? Uh, all in favor? Yeah, in all right so moving on to um, 7b which is the development agreement for 2017 county road to uh wendy's away so i assume that you'll speak to this ceo thank you mr chair <laughs> sure. yes i will uh, I, I will speak to this particular Item. So there is a development agreement uh, in front of committee tonight, and uh, it is uh, uh, required to fulfill a condition uh, of uh, severance B 165-21, uh, and uh, it, the, uh, that severance was uh, conditionally approved by the United Counties uh, of uh, Leeds and Grenville on uh, April uh, 27th, uh, 2022. And in particular, condition five of that severance a decision requires the applicant to enter into a development agreement for the satisfaction of the township to implement the recommendations and findings of the geotechnical investigation, environmental impact assessment, and stage one, two, and three of the archaeological assessments. And uh, the agreement is, uh, as already mentioned, attached uh, um, uh, to this uh, action item and is prepared uh, to satisfy this condition. Uh, one of the items that I would like to note is that typically uh, the agreement is registered uh, against the land to which it applies and the municipality is entitled uh, to enforce the provisions of it against the owner and subject to the Registry Act and Land Titles Act. And uh, it is applicable to any and all subsequent owners of the land. So uh, the recommendation uh, in front of uh, committee tonight is that uh, committee recommend that council en enter into a development agreement with the owner of 2017 uh, County Road 22. Thank you, Mr. CAO. Um, further comments or questions? You may. Long process for this part of calendar. I would just get it through. Council Martin. Okay. Uh, I, I would concur that uh, they've been very patient and have done a great job uh, compiling all of the necessary information uh, to satisfy um, all levels of, of government with this property. So, um, with that, I need a mover for the recommendation. Moved by Councillor Wadi Smail. I do need a seconder for the recommendation. Um, um, seconded by Chris Ward. Uh, Councilor Chris Ward, sorry, Chris. Um, uh, any further comment? Hearing none, all in favor? Let us again. So, year end review. 22 year end review. Let's hear the great news. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will uh, turn this over to the uh, clerk that uh, went to the work to uh, prepare uh, some of the highlights uh, of the accomplishments in 2022. So through the chair, um, as the CAO has indicated, this is just a high level overview of some of the accomplishments that have taken place throughout the township um, over the year. Um, we provide this on an annual basis at the end of the year for the council. Um, just a couple of things um, to highlight that uh, in the intergovernmental area, um, as everyone is aware, we've just completed another municipal school board election that makes it um, two elections in the same year, um, with the provincial election earlier this year, followed by the municipal school board election. 
Um, the township partnered with FNC for the provision of sewage system management under the building code. Um, another partnership was with Augusta and the town of Prescott to form the tri council meetings, which discussed a number of items such as recreation, um, drug strategy, uh, medical professional recruitment, et cetera, et cetera. Um, more partnerships. We did a lot of in 2022. Um, with Augusta Prescott and Rockville um, to continue the route transit pilot project, where we recently entered into a partnership agreement with Jet One to renewal termination services, financial arrangement, operation vehicles, maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. Moving on to the human resources, we had quite a few new personnel join our crew in 2022, including Chris LeBlanc. Our manager of public works, Rachel Porter for recreation coordinator, Jeff Belkamp and Jared Critch for facility operators, Sean Nicholson, our treasurer. And uh, in the beginning of December of 2022, the fire department recruited an additional 10 members with four resignations and four retiring at the end of the year. Um, I won't go through all the recognition. We've had a very busy year. Uh, a lot of awards for recognition of years of service for the township as well as fire department. Um, to highlight earlier in November, I believe it was, may have been October, I'm forgetting my months right now, um, the council awarded the Citizen of the Year to Richard Woodland and a new category for the Youth Citizen of the Year was awarded to Ren Nepsey. For economic development and community engagement, um, we continue partnership with Augusta Prescott and the Prescott BIA to deliver um, a number of programs, including the Digital Transformation Grant, Shop Peer Program, Digital Service Squad, and the Digital Main Street Coordinator that has been in place in since October 2020 has been at the forefront of all these projects. Um, as well, we've done a number of different projects with Greenfield, as well as a couple of other um, industrial and commercial businesses, and uh, a handful of site plan control agreements with other businesses in the area. This year was a little bit quieter in regards to community development and engagement. We approved um, two community improvement projects, but I'm sure there'll be more to come in the new year. Um, as of November 28th, we have 135 building permits. And for the year 2022, community grants and donations total 12,000 plus a number of in kind supports that's uh, provided throughout the township to community organizations that a lot of times in house staff um, complete additional access work for them, or we provide services or facilities free of charge. Um, another highlight is uh, our community kitchen week, which was held in. April 18th to 22nd. Um, I won't go through all the details, but a number of community organizations as well as schools and residents helped out in beautifying the township in some way, shape, or form. Um, under administration, um, we're in the process, it's been a long haul, but uh, of completing a large scale record digitalization project in partnership with Image Advantage, they're the ones that provide us our file hold uh, data management system. Um, we recently renewed an agreement with eScribe and another subscription agreement is before you tonight for additional modules. Um, we completed the pilot program for the food, food cycle science. Uh, the township offered 100 closed loop indoor <laughs> compost alternative units to residents at a subsidized cost, which required them to complete a survey at the end of the 12 week program where they tracked everything they did and how much. Um, they used it for and how much of a reduction there was. Again, that's before you tonight. Um, just to summarize again for the election, we had a slightly lower voter turnout rate of 47.9. A number of 2,648 electors cast at least one ballot, with 59% of them being internet, 10.5 being phone, and 30.4 being paper. Um, there is a couple of proclamations in 2022, and then a number of new updated uh, policy bylaws agreements that were before you as well. Um, the emergency management control group met in September, as well as November, to review emergency plan, complete tabletop exercise, as well as new training. Good. Uh, thank you to the clerk. It's certainly been uh, a very busy past 
past year, although it feels that it's been a crazy uh, uh, busy last month, but, but most of this was done uh, in advance of that. So it's certainly been a very busy uh, time in township. Uh, staff has done uh, a fantastic job um, keeping keeping up with, with everything, doing the absolute best they can. And, and I, I think worthwhile noting that uh, we continue to remain um, good, uh, good friends and good neighbors around us. And I hope that we can continue that great work too. So good work to staff. Let's keep it up. Um, on to Township Hall renovation concept designs. Here we go. CAO. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess the uh, uh, the overarching uh, goal with respect to, uh, uh, to 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 this project is to make the uh, the building in the area more accessible and functional while still accommodating uh, some of the external, uh, the current external um, organizations. So uh, just to, to sort of look back uh, during the 2022 budget uh, deliberations, uh, I think there was a, an acknowledgement uh, of the uh, previous uh, council that uh, some type of operational modification was needed to make the building more uh, a more functional uh, workplace or workspace. Um, so uh, we had engaged uh, IM engineering and surveying to complete a high-level assessment of the building based on its current configuration and utilization. And in, in the end, after several uh, discussions and sort of uh, reiterations, it was uh, determined that the best value would be expanding the workspace in the lower level and relocating the chambers to the upper level. And a couple of those areas uh, were to keep uh, staff all on the same level that are working uh, at the at, at the building on a daily basis, and uh, be able to increase the ability to to accommodate uh, larger public attended uh, uh, within that council chamber area. So um, certainly, uh, this is not the. Um, and all be all of the uh, of the concept. It still will probably go through some um, um, refinements uh, throughout the uh, process. But some high level features with respect to the upper level is first and foremost uh, having a washroom upstairs. Uh, so it's certainly an accessible washroom at it. Um, creating some type of closed session chamber that would allow the public uh, to remain in their seats while council members relocated uh, to a separate uh, room. Some type of divider that would allow that when the uh, council chambers were not in session, so to speak, that uh, external organizations would be able to utilize uh, a good portion of that uh, upper level and add some additional uh, fireproof uh, storage for some of those records that uh, we, we are required to keep in perpetuity. Uh, with respect to the lower level uh, features is a dedicated uh, IT and equipment room uh, and adding uh, some fully accessible washrooms and entranceway and uh, some additional office and storage uh, space. So, um, Really, just uh, at this particular stage, the recommendation is that uh, committee recommend that council approve the, the, the concept and direct staff to move forward on transitioning the council chambers to the upper level and create an improved workspace within the existing lower level of the building. Mr. CAO, uh, just a point of clarity first um, before we open up for discussion. So, this isn't a final plan. This is this is just sort of a working this is idea of, of what it can be. Will will we see more finished plan before before any work begins? Uh, so through the through the chair, uh, the the intent would be that before before any uh, real work begins, that that the sort of the more final uh, concept would be would, would be brought back. Um, I, I anticipate that. Uh, uh, there, there, there's potential with this, uh, at least this initial high level concept out there that committee members may have some feedback and anticipate that uh, 
um, potentially over the next month, there may be some 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 public feedback that that may need to be incorporated. Just wanted to sort of make sure that some of those areas were were at least captured uh, because I believe that um, uh, back when it was originally brought up in the 2022 budget deliberation, there was a real concern that uh, that uh, none of the external organizations would be able to utilize the uh, the upper level. And uh, I think that uh, at least in a very high level, we've incorporated that there would be a, the ability to. We just have to, to start to refine that. But before we go too far, the, the main uh, idea is that there's a, there's a commitment to move to the upstairs so that we can put our efforts uh, dedicated towards that. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for that. We, we've certainly seen, you know, larger crowds um, with uh, a return from COVID that, you know, are, are better suited to be accommodated uh, in, a, in a bigger area, certainly the small uh, in here. But the other thing that's very notable is that, uh, you know, we have uh, a couple of people working in our, uh, in our ward or in our closed session room. <laughs> Room all of the time now is office space, and and they certainly deserve and need need office space. So uh, I think it's time to uh, time to get this uh, project going. So uh, let's open it up to uh, comments or questions uh, to members of council. Council Murta, through you, Mr. Chair. How busy is the upstairs now with those other groups? Um, maybe I'll ask the uh, the chair to uh, Council Martel. Prior to COVID, it was used uh, on average three nights a week. There was a um, Celtic dancing club that used it. Um, and then there was the Scouts and the uh, uh, the Cubs. Or it it might have been a combination of, of the group, but they used it two nights a week. But they, they haven't since uh, restrictions have opened back up. Um, and there has been opportunities for groups to run line dancing classes up there too. That happened prior to COVID, but it has, again, those uh, functions haven't started back up. We are currently running our arts program right now up there for the like over a seven week period. So we are starting to utilize it ourselves a little bit, but uh, I'm not sure if the scouts or the Cubs are going to be returning. Um, I spoke to the, the Cub leader and he's uncertain as to whether or not they will form a club again. Thank you. Um, looking through the design, it, it certainly takes into consideration that you know the, the community groups would still be able to use the majority of the floor um, with the divider and the ability to move the divider. Though, correct? Like we don't want to. Even if the scouts came back, we'd still be able to accommodate them. It would just look a little different than what. And what it does to them. That is correct. Yes. So there's no worry. There's still they'll still be there's still be room for them to utilize the facility up there. Yes. And they'll have a washroom. Uh Councillor Snell. Um to the chair to CAO. I'm not quite familiar with it upstairs. I mean, is there only one exit from up there? The steps, like for a fire exit, if there was a fire that happened right there. So uh, there would be through, through through the chair to uh, Councillor Snell. Uh, there, there is a second exit. If the if you look on, um, let me just the, uh, if if you look on the uh, upper floor, uh, second floor plan, there's an exit uh, stairs uh, uh, down, which is right uh, sort of by the the current stage uh, area. So that is a second. That is a second exit. Page two forty five. Page two forty five. So there is the, there, there is two exits from that upper level. I'm familiar with that one myself. Right, is it right there? So we'll get to that as you're yes, you you will come out from the end. Oh, interesting. The stairs are already there. The stairs yeah. the, the stairs are already there. there. There's there, there, there. I, I found it like when I looked at it, it was I was like that's this way. I thought it would be a new staircase, but it is existing and it's already there. Yes, yeah, so it's really cool. oh, never used it. Um, Councillor Smell, are you satisfied? Yes. So, uh, well, I guess first and foremost, it's always a safety first thing. I'll put my safety committee hat back on for a second. 
Uh, the only thing I'd be thinking we want to consider is if they let me go in office over here, I think we should still leave the emergency the road there personally. That's just, you know, there is no other exit otherwise if something happens, there's a problem. So that's all I'd consider from that. And uh, otherwise, I think uh, the mayor touched on it. The, the room divider upstairs is movable, so it can move back and forth, or is it fixed? So, so through, the, uh, through, through, through the chair, I, I, I would say in the final. Uh, reiteration it will most likely be fixed it's just um uh, was just sort of on there for not not saying that we're dividing it in half but, uh, there was already a suggestion with respect to uh where that closed session um uh, proposed session room is that potentially uh that it could be that the uh, uh, council is recessed into that area and potentially that fixed divider is it, it, it is there that can be uh, opened and closed so that you allow uh, more uh, upstairs that, that can be used uh, for uh, when there's not a council in session. Yeah, thank you. That was my, my concern is the limiting the space where you had less than enough. So, I mean, I even thought just stow the desks underneath the stairs or something, or the stage or something, but whatever you guys, you know, as long as we're maximizing the space, I think that's great. So, yeah, all right. And uh, just uh, for transparency again, uh, there's a cost associated uh, with it. The source of funding is um, uh, what? Yeah, so uh, uh, in, in, in 2022, there was uh, 350,000 uh, set aside. It was a combination of uh, uh, modernization uh, funds and uh, a portion of, uh, from the uh, administration reserve, which had uh, had put aside some money for uh, for uh, renovations to the uh, to, to the building. And and I'm I'm sorry I didn't give you the question ahead of time. Do we know roughly how much is each? I know it's two sixty or something like that for modernization. I just wanted. Uh, the, so, I, I I believe it, it was one hundred and twenty five thousand, maybe from the administration uh, reserves, and the remainder coming from uh, from, from modernization. So uh, approximately that. hundred from reserves, a little over hundred from reserves, the rest from modernization. I do I I do believe that it's two two seventy five from uh, modernization. That sounds and, that correct. and just again for transparency while we're on the conversation, uh, modernization dollars are exactly what? Uh, modernization uh, dollars uh, that, uh, that that came from the uh, the province to actually um, uh, assist municipalities in uh, reviewing their uh, operations in, in an effort to uh, to, to, to become uh, more. Efficient, effective at, uh, at at delivering uh, services, uh, programs, or uh, access to the to, to the public. So exactly what, what the uh, I I I would say that uh, what's being proposed is uh, it is certainly in line with what the intent of the uh, the modernization uh, funding were uh, were established for. Mm -hmm. so, uh, give the chair to the CEO or to the Excuse me. Is um is there any way we can put this on our website? Maybe get a little bit of feedback from the public, um, looking at it or have a bunch of these photocopied or whatever. Uh, on the website through, 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 through the chair the the, yeah. the the intent yeah the intent was to, to have it in, in in the public forum now to give to to to, to give that opportunity for. Uh, for, for, for individuals to look at it and, 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 and provide feedback. Good. Are you looking looking to have this in one of the five moving pages that changes or a link? Well, so it's yeah, I, I would like to see if, like, if someone's going through our, our uh, somebody would like to find it in the agenda or the worm so, and, and bring it up and maybe see you know, and yeah, give I, us some feedback. So I think, like, uh, through the chair, uh, depending on um, um, committee uh, tonight and council uh, next week, if there is sort of a um, if if the decision is to, to to move forward with looking at uh, moving the, the, the council chambers up, I I would suggest that we uh, better refine the concept 
Uh, and then once that concept is better refined, uh, then, then if we, the, the idea is to, 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 to post that on the web page, uh, then I think that would be a better time. There's still um, uh, lots of refinements that I, that, that I would say need to be completed before we get that's just uh, approval of the concept. It's, it, it, it's, it's, really, upstairs. it's really just to give a uh, committee and, and, and council a very high level to say, hey, we, we, if we're moving up the, the, the council chambers upstairs, you can still have the council chambers, you can still have external organizations uh, use it. Uh, you're you're going to have, have an added washroom. And right, I think re really it's, it's, it's that simple at this particular stage. Yeah. And and in fairness, we've been talking about this for four years. I know we got put off a little bit by uh, by COVID, but it's been almost four years that we've had the reduction in our OMPF uh, uh, and then provided the modernization dollars to do jobs just like this one. And we've sort of been kicking it along and kicking it along and kicking it along and not to, uh, we're missing out. We're missing out on other, on other um, modernization dollar uh, incentives because we haven't actually utilized those dollars for what they were intended to be utilized. So I think it's time to get to get right on this. And, and, and if I may, Mr. Chair, there is also in the, in the part of the record, along with the, uh, um, uh, the the grant that typically does come out, uh, well, I shouldn't say, it, it has the last couple of years with, like with re respect to enabling accessibility uh, fund is yeah. the so uh, I think what, once we have more detailed drawings with respect to the accessible washrooms and, uh, and, and entrance, then we're, we'll be in a much better position to, to, to look to apply for some of that grant to help offset some of those costs. Um, because uh, I, I, I certainly do anticipate that um, 350 is probably like. Okay, so there is a recommendation. Can somebody read the recommendation for me if they can find it? The committee recommend that council approve the concept and direct staff to move forward on transitioning the council chambers to the upper level and create an improved workspace within the existing lower level of the building. Okay, so. Mr. Chair, potentially a mover and a seconder. Yes. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> I'm just considering the wording. <laughs> Seeing if, if everyone's giving people time to digest the wording and make sure they're comfortable with the wording. We need a mover. I'll we move. do need a mover and I'll I'll move. if everybody's comfortable with it. So I'll so move. moved by uh, Deputy Mayor De La and seconded by uh, Councillor Bill Mark Martel. Is there further discussion? I look forward to seeing the plans. Uh, call the question. All in favor? <laughs> Next up. Uh, seven E, which is a very successful program that happened in the last year as well, uh, helping out rural municipalities with green initiatives. The food cycler additional pilot program. Uh, you're going to be speaking to this CEO. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I will uh, I, I will do my best to speak to this particular item. So back in uh, between April and July of, of this year, we uh, conducted the first uh, program with respect to, um, um, as mentioned, I uh, believe it was two, uh, two reports ago in the uh, year, year end review. So um, there were uh, there were 100 units uh, issued. They were they, they were subsidized by um, um, Food Cycle Science and Innovation uh, Canada and the, the municipality. So in that particular program, uh, those participating uh, in the uh, retail value of the, that unit was I believe uh, uh, $500, and it was subsidized down uh, to. Uh, Basically, with tax, it would be one hundred sixty-nine dollars and fifty cents. So all all units uh, uh, were were subscribed to, and uh, what uh, what we were quite pleased at, although it was a, a requirement of participating in the program, uh, it, it's always a little bit of a hit and miss on whether the uh, uh, 
survey at the end is, is completed, but we can comfortably say that 99 out of 100 surveys were completed. And I say the overall uh, feedback was uh, that they were uh, satisfied with the unit. I, I would say the only item uh, okay. that, uh, that some, well, they could. 50% of the respondents indicate was that the, the unit was a little bit undersized uh, for the quantity of food uh, generated in the, uh, in, in the household. So uh, obviously food cycle science uh, took, the, took, took those comments and I'm sure that uh, it was certainly not the, the only municipality that, uh, that <coughs> may have received some of those comments and, and they, they have created a, a, a um, sort of an additional unit that has uh, Basically, uh, instead of I believe two point five liters, it, uh, it now has five uh, five liters. So, um, as part of our original agreement, we certainly have an opportunity to run another uh, program partnership and, and extend extend that out. And uh, I think what we're putting forward uh, uh, tonight is uh, is the suggestion to run another uh, one hundred units. With a 50 50 split uh, of the original uh, FC uh, 30 unit and the new uh, Maestro uh, unit. And that the uh, approximately uh, $12,000 plus um, HSC would just be incorporated into the 2023 uh, operating budget under the, uh, under the uh, waste uh, disposal uh, end of it. And I'll certainly open it up for, uh, for, 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 for any questions that uh, that can be out. Thank, thank you for that that uh, great that great overview. Um, certainly, in the last uh, in the last year, well received, uh, well judged. If everyone on council read through the report that's there, there's a lot of good information. Almost everyone that we spoke to uh, was happy. I think almost everyone that I spoke to wanted it to be a little bit bigger, but they were amazed at, at what, what it could do. Um, uh, I'm certainly going to line up for a bigger one. Um, let's open the floor to discussion. I saw his hand first because I was looking to the left. Sorry. <laughs> um, Deputy Mayor. Well, thanks. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, chair, chair, the CEO. Are we getting uh, uh, a lot of residents uh, asking for the uh, for the food cycle? Like we had the first hundred. Is there a lot of inquiries? Um, so through the through, through, through the chair, um, I, I I would say not not in the last few months, but when uh, when we were sort of nearing the. Uh, the 100 participants, we certainly did have um, uh, a, a number of um, uh, residents that were interested in that in, in that pilot project, but we we had reached that uh, that number, and like at that time, uh, it was sort of indicated that um, depending on the uh, how well that pilot project went, that there there may be. An opportunity to, to 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 run an additional pilot project, but um, we certainly haven't uh, had any inquiries within the last few months with respect to it, um, because I guess first and foremost they're not even if they're, they're not sure if another pilot project is available. Continue. Yes, can I? Sure. Thank you. Uh, what's the maestro? Um, do you? Can we reduce that, like say 75, 25, 75 uh, for the FC 30 and 25? Is it up to us or is it their program, 50, 50? Uh, through, through the chair, uh, staff has had at least uh, one or two discussions with, uh, uh, with the food cycle science with, with, with respect to that. And I guess we're basing the 50, 50 uh, split is based on the survey results where we basically had 50% of the respondents that indicated that they would have liked to have seen a bigger unit. So uh, we're, we're utilizing that feedback as, as sort of that ratio. Um, but I don't think that there would be anything uh, to necessarily prevent uh, a 
60-40 or 75-25 uh, split. However, that, that's the basis of, that is the basis of the 50-50 split is based on the survey results of, uh, of those 100 users and some of the uh, additional information that we've collected from other municipalities where uh, most likely it's been around that. Just one more and that's it, Mr. Uh, Chair, if I may. Uh, what about any uh, buyback? Will the company buy back if we don't have a dollar? Or is it uh, written in stone? And we're still going to check the 34 form. Uh, certainly, the, the, the idea and the concept, similar, similar to the last one, if we've done um, a sufficient job, I, I believe I'm going to say with public education and all, all, all of those avenues and, 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 and uh, um, um, promoting the, uh, uh, the program, and we, 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 we don't reach those numbers, there is probably a um, restocking fee that we would be required to uh, uh, to cover, but I do believe that, that there would be the ability to uh, re 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 return those. That's good. Yeah. And, and, and before I go for further questions, just you know, for members of council that weren't worked here, uh, an initial uh, from the University of uh, Burnaby, uh, Amy, I can't remember what Amy's last name was, uh, through through an innovation grant was a semi final. Um, uh, for an Innovation Canada award to to find municipalities like ours that that didn't offer green uh, recycling, that it was too expensive to do you know, green recycle pickup, uh, and found that what is it up to sixty percent of uh, garbage in a gar garbage bag is actually green recycle that that could come out. So so the machine uh, gives the ability for for folks in the rural area to. Uh, overnight with four or four to six hours, I think, uh, be able to turn uh, green products, uh, a good list of, a long list of green products uh, into compost material. You take it out, dump it in your garden the next day. Uh, fantastic uptake from citizens. It's, it, was, it was very well received. Uh, if you read through the, uh, the comments, uh, people are very happy with it. The, the comment that maybe isn't so good was the size, but yeah. Uh, but they're offering a remedy with that uh, as well. So uh, further further comments. Well, I, I, I believe the deputy mayor, the mayor read my notes on the margin. But I think we covered most of it. You know, it came down to the you know the fifty people who have the smaller system today that do one. If there's, I know they talked about an additional bit. I don't know if that's something that we would be available for them, but that's not something that follow that they would probably like to have. Um, uh, and as far as the hundred units that were scooped up, they obviously there was a obviously was a backlog of there was an extra there was more more people than we had units for, so there's obviously still a demand for it of some sort. And we wouldn't want to entertain the idea of taking the orders ahead of time before we place the order, or is it just we? I know we have a short timeline as the problem there, right? So I think that's part of the challenge to the CEO or to the CEO, to the chair. So 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 through the chair with the first uh, um, program. That we operate and we do the same with this second pilot project is that uh, residents will actually have to purchase the, the, the unit before they're um, uh, put on as uh, on, on that particular uh, spot. So they are sort of pre sold. However, uh, we're uh, um, the, uh, the the units will probably be on route as we're as we're getting those items. Uh, Pre-sold, so to speak, um, but uh, just will note on page two fifty six of uh, of three fifty three the buyback guarantee. Uh, so if uh, if they will buy back any unsold units after a period of one year from the delivery date, uh, it must be new and unopened uh, condition, and there's a twenty five dollar uh, unit. <laughs> I think that answers my questions. I was more just concerned to the uh, deputy who was going about the next local room versus getting it ready. Yeah. Uh, Councilman, yeah. um, I, I just one quick one as well. So, do we know who the so in the survey results, so fifty percent of the folks that responded said that they wish it was bigger. Um, and it stands to reason that if there's extra baskets and they're uh, orderable, 
while we're doing this. If we have that data, is there any way that we can contact them to tell them that there's an extra basket if they order when we're ordering this or give them the option of upgrading their machine to the bigger one if, if they so choose? Um, through the through, through the chair, uh, we can we we can certainly look into that. I, I don't um, I don't necessarily think that the 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 upgrade or the the the, the additional bucket uh, is is necessarily tied to this particular uh, program. So it's something that we could uh, we could look to at least advise and offer. Okay. okay. I think the last thing I think that's worth noting is that. Uh, if we order the 100, um, we get an additional 10 at a, at a very, very reduced uh, rate for uh, folks that can't afford uh, to purchase at, at the original rate at a very, very you know, much reduced rate or community organizations, churches, that, that sort of thing uh, at, a, at a very, very small, I think it's $75. So um, we get, what, I think it's 10, right? Uh, to, to which it would be 10 units, but uh, just, just just to know what it's for uh, residential. residential. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's not uh, it's not extended to community groups. Yeah. So it has to be an organization. organization. So we're still looking at here. We'd have to create some so, kind of a threshold for that, I suppose. I think through the chair that the, 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 there would have to be a, a, a sort of a policy put together on, on what to, uh, the individual that is what we need to meet to, to, to get it at that point. It's worthwhile noting in today's world, though, that the food cycler is willing to, you know, give 10% back for affordable affordable costs. So I think that's, that's good, good on their part as well. Um, okay, so is there a resolution or recommendation for this? Sorry. There is not. There are... There are... I got two forces. Uh, so recommendation is that committee recommend that the municipal council approves an additional municipal subsidized purchase of 100 food cycler units, 50-50 split, between the FC30 and the Maestro to implement another pilot program in partnership with Food Cycle Science and the cost to be included in the 2023 budget. Further discussion? Uh, yeah, should we not at this point consider getting the extra 10 Knowing that we have to develop policy around how to disperse those, though, at the same time, does that make think, more sense? The extra 10 is included. Because of the okay. That's included in that. Right. So we in the budget of it. Yeah, through, through the chair, we, in essence, we would be receiving 110 units. But, uh, perfect. Good. That's it. Okay. Uh, further comments or questions before I ask for a move on the second one? Councilor, you're worried about. Uh, oh, I'm good. Well, I'm happy. You're happy 50 50? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So, sounds you're going to move it. Okay. Seconded by Councilor Smale. <coughs> all the questions, there's no further comments. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Good. 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 We're getting green in the township of Edwardsburg Cardinal. Um, ooh, this could be a long one. Oh no, next one's a good um, Item F, the 2022 township audit plan. <laughs> this was real. I was really hoping. <laughs> Hopefully, this one isn't the long one. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will. I will ask. Uh, I didn't have my glasses down. If anybody knows, <laughs> the treasurer to, uh, to 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 speak to this particular item. Uh -huh. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Chair. Um, purpose of this is to uh, get approval to sign the uh, the the auditor's letter to the engagement letter to perform the audit. Uh, so, a bit of background: uh, MNP had been appointed a law firm or an audit firm for the 2022 fiscal year uh, audit. They will perform an interim audit December 14th to 16th, and the year-end audit will take place February 27th to March 3rd. Uh, one change this year is uh, due to uh, enhanced audit standards around uh, uh, processes. They, there are multiple questionnaires that staff will have to fill out, um, and uh, MMP will assess those, those questionnaires and uh, assure that they continue reporting soon. Um, an officer is required to sign the engagement letter uh, before the audit can proceed, so that's the policy implication. 
uh, no financial um, considerations at this time. It's all stated in their in their letter what uh, the audit's going to be, and we have to do an audit. We can't not do it. So, um, recommendation is that uh, uh, council receives the audit plan and authorizes uh, treasurer to sign the engagement letter as a requirement of the annual audit. Good, thank you, Barbara Nicholson. Um, before we begin, no, we said no financial implications, but my understanding in reading through this is that there's a considerable increase in the cost of performing this audit this year versus, versus last year. So uh, can you speak to that? Yeah. That, that was in the background piece to the changes in the uh, audit standards that the staff has to do. So that's what it relates to. I did ask whether this is a, a one-time charge uh, or something we'll see. And uh, I got the usual um, auditor responses, maybe. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, things do, do change. So that's what the... Uh, for, for this audit year, that's what that extra I think it was five to seven thousand dollars was related to those questionnaires. Yeah, it's good, close to 30 percent, give or take a little bit in the, yeah. of an increase. Which... Yeah, and, and there are there are other um, things that need to be considered in this in, in the 2022 audit year, other things around asset retirement obligation. Uh, so there are new other pieces that would be included in that. So I would expect. As we as we learn more what the ARO requirements are, so we should be able to manage that more on on our uh, desks as staff than, than rely on on others. Yeah. Yeah. And and do we know um, this this maybe the CAA will sort of put you on the spot to treasure, but do we how long have we been with them? Fifteen years, I think. Well, I, I believe that it's been at least fifteen years, if not more. Uh, not necessarily um, with the un, under the MNP title, but uh, the the previous audit, audit firm was uh, was taken over by MNP uh, some years back. So we've sort of been with, in, in, in essence with the same uh, audit firm. <laughs> For an extended period of time. And so would we, you know, maybe in 2023, would there be a plan to, to re review that, that relationship? Possibly. Through the CAO to the, to the chair, I, I, I would certainly like to put that into the 2023 uh, planning process is that we would either uh, recommend going to a full RFP or at the very least uh, evaluating the, the service just because of the time that we received. Um, the feedback that I received from, from staff was that the last year's audit didn't go as smoothly as, as it could on MNP's end. So I'd like to see if that level of service is still that way. Um, would probably change my mind as to how aggressively I would want to pursue an RMP. Yeah. And, uh, and I think we use, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we use MNP for the core services right. uh, as well. And I think that there was a, a, a considerable increase in, in that cost by as well, right? Uh, there as well. So, you know, we're looking, I think, again, at the committee level there, probably at, at having a look at that relationship too. So, uh, is there a recommendation, sorry, for this? Yeah, there is, right? There has to be this one. There is. Um, uh, so it would be that committee recommends that council receives the 22, uh, 2022 audit plan and authorizes the treasurer to sign the engagement letter as required uh, of the annual audit. So we'll open the floor to questions. You look like sure. Talk. So we're, we're not going to spend the next nine days engaging and getting more quotes for some clients by that. Okay. Uh, no, I mean, we had this conversation before. It's the exact same conversation. And, and uh, you know, we, we know we'll look at next year. And right now we're locked in a little bit, unfortunately. This is the last this year. And uh, we'll see what happens. So, you know, enjoy it. Sponsor Smith? Look, you're going to. No, I don't think we're going to get there. That's very long. 
All right, so I need a mover and seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Joe Martel, seconded by Councillor Bonnie Smail. Further comments? In here from none. Moving to the question, all in favor? In any case. Okay, so now the fun. All right, I think the clerk probably speak to this one. <laughs> um, item G, which is the uh, committees of council terms of reference. The clerk. So to keep it shared, um, let's just start with uh, going through schedules as to what I propose for changes based on the previous discussion and work our way through it. That would be the easiest thing for everyone to follow, if that works. Sure. So, schedule um, the is the structure and appointments. Uh, the proposed changes are outlined uh, in the committee agenda and minutes section to better reflect the way the agenda and minutes are set up and handled procedurally. Uh, before it was. Can I stop you for one sec? Sure. So, so if everybody goes, do you want them to go to section to to set schedule A, then, so they can schedule A. Yes, yeah. Just see where the tracking is. Yeah. So, is everybody on schedule A? I think it's page three hundred three, right? Three hundred three, three hundred four, depending on yeah. which one you're looking at. And so, those will be the the red and blue. Correct. Yeah, it? depending on what day I was editing, it may be red, it may be blue, it may be purple. <laughs> <laughs> My I, system I, I didn't like purple, but... Okay, sorry to cut, sorry to cut you off. I just wanted to make sure that everybody was following along on the right page. No worries. So through the chair under the committee's agendas and practices, um, section I have just done a couple of general updates to better fit with what we have, as well as incorporating in our general format a possibility of consent agenda for future discussions that have potentially happening in uh, January, February, when we start to update to our procedural bylaw. Uh, this does not lock it in, in case things do change. This is just general practices, um, but we did not have anything for approval of the agenda or discussion items, action information items were separated out, mayor's report. So it's just keeping more consistent to what we already have, and we've done practices for a number of years. And if I can stop you just for one sec, just on the uh, consent agenda uh, addition, that that would be when it would be the culmination of unanimously moved items that come from committees to council meetings that would get included in the consent agenda at a council meeting. So through the chair, that would be for a procedural bylaw in regards to council agendas. The committee of the council's uh, terms of reference, these are just dealing solely with the basis of an agenda to build committee structures. Okay, not what goes correct. Uh, what goes so the agenda structures. that you speak today, mm -hmm. that just shows that that end can be put in that agenda. Okay. And yeah, so so we can talk about what goes in the consent agenda mm -hmm. when? Uh, for our procedural discussion. For our procedural discussion. Okay, cool. This is just to get it in there so that way we are conflicting with our potential. Bringing one in line with the other. Correct. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no worries. Um, and additionally, um, under the minutes of committees to be recorded, um, this was a little bit outdated because it stated that the previous minutes were approved at committee levels. Um, in my seven years here and prior to that, we have to go back a number of years for any committees to actually approve in our minutes. Those are all done at council. So again, this is just removing that section to be more in line with our current practices. And so that takes care of the changes that have been made to schedule A. To schedule a. And schedule B moving along is the appointment policy, which pertains to the application for appointment two and the holding of positions in boards and committees. Uh, proposed team changes is to item six, which incorporates uh, to follow the election cycle, uh, permitting recruitment as needed rather than November of each year. Um, that was never really followed either way <laughs> um, because unfortunately people do resign partway through a two-year term or four-year term for committees um, rather than waiting until November of that year, we'll usually uh, recruit as needed the following month unless direction from council says otherwise. 
So this is more of just a clean up to make it so that way we can actually follow the procedure correctly. I have, a couple, I have a couple of questions. Well, one basically in 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 schedule B, if that's okay. Um, we um, in the last term removed the um, mayor from uh, deciding the committee members, and we moved it to. Uh, the entire group that it was that it was council that that would uh, make those decisions, and and reading through uh, all of the all of the committees under under membership, um, uh, on any pick any one of the the committees, I'll I'll just go to the top of page three three oh eight, the last sentence under um under membership says the mayor may review and make recommendations annually regarding the effectiveness of the public representatives. I think for continuity um, that that word and it just would make it more congruent with, in my opinion, with what we decided in the last term um, was to make that a council decision, not a mayor decision. So if I could make the suggestion that those two words, the mayor, the exchanged for council may review and make recommendations annually. Um, that in anywhere that that's referenced throughout this document, I, it would make me feel a little bit better. I don't know how the committee feels about that, but for me personally, I, it brings it in line with with what we've what we've said in the past. So, just needed general consensus, I think, from the group at the table to remove that responsibility from this seat and put it on all five seats. <laughs> Yes, through the chair, it was um, only directed under Schedule A for structure and appointments to change that section of it. Um, but I do agree that if rather than the mayor have the whole committee, if they need to review anything for um, making recommendations to the representatives, it does make sense. We would have to have an open discussion with this. Yeah. It would be a very easy change. So we need a general consensus from. For that will yeah. always change from everyone, or at least a yay or a nay. Right. Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, okay. So that's all of all us are, are on the, the same page uh, with, with that one. I think that's the only, the only comment that I had. One was the terms of what exactly consent agenda was so that everybody understood it uh, ahead. Um, oh, the one other question that I had. Um, comes down to to membership on the library board. Um, and it is a requirement, correct, that one council member sit on, on the library board? So through the chair, that was added uh, prior to my term here. Um, it's not a mandated requirement that I'm aware of. I'd have to go and review the Public Library Act. Um, it's just been best practice within our township. You have one member of the council attending it as part of the board, so that way they can report um, back and forth both to the board, so that way they can get a monthly update as to the going on within the township as well as the council chambers and what activities are being processed, um, as well as that council member reporting back whenever uh, the council was receiving the minutes of those board meetings so that way it provided clarification that they thought um it's more of a sharing of information process that sure. a lot of them so so then that leads to my next question then and i and, and i'm just, uh, i'm going out on a bit of a limb here to assume that uh, the members of the library board are compensated for being members of of, of that board and have probably uh, paid mileage to to do that, would council members be entitled to those uh, you know, those benefits as well? So through the chair, um, any committee meetings that council attends is part of your honorarium as it currently stands. Committee members receive $30. Um, the public library handles their honorarium separately than we do. Um, the township provides for any uh, committee of the holds. We pay out at the end of the year um, as for mileage, um, currently mileage is only compensated for um, livestock viewers and 
um, council members is required to attend any meetings under this, under this bylaw. Um, just going back to section schedule C, we have a uh, proposed mileage included for the new adjustment numbers. Yeah, so, yeah. so is the public library is separate though, right? From council, it has its own CEO. And I, I think in my mind, I just saw it as a non requirement for council members to to sit on it and that it was separate from that. And through the chair, they do operate separately under their own uh, Public Library Act. Um, like I said, it's just the best practice in the previous terms uh, that we have some member of yeah. council appointed for information sharing for the most part. It's up to council whether or not they want to maintain that. And basically, the only thing we do is provide them the uh, terms of reference, the number of appointees, who's Going to be appointed, we manage the recruitment of all of that, and uh, we share policies with them. If they have a policy, um, great. If they need to, they fall back on their policies. And last, if I'm not mistaken, last term, Councillor Cameron did it for the entire, did it for the entire term. The term. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, sorry, I monopolized that for a moment, but so yes. yes. No, and Mr. Chair, was just to uh, uh, make a suggestion that whether other committee members might have some comments. Oh, yeah, some absolutely. Schedules. That's where I was getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because I think we went, we we get went from yeah. Schedule B to Schedule B. So I guess we'll. Yeah. Open it up. There you go. We'll I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> I've done, done monopolizing. <laughs> All right. So to members of council. Starting at schedule A, B, or C, or or B. Sorry. Um, comments or so, uh, you, you always well, yeah, that would be good too. <clears throat> was a long weekend of reading. It was 353 pages, and I think you had a bunch of questions, so we didn't see what <laughs> people put this together for nothing. So, um, I, I'm still a little. Uh, uh, more detail required, I guess, on the um, uh, geez, now I've got the term in so bad here. Uh, just a second, you know, yeah, on the um, uh, there it is right there, right. on the consent agenda, um, what it is, what's in it, and you know, uh, you know, if we see something in that consent agenda, um, I'm well, I mean, you can answer the question all at once at some point, but uh, uh, that we're seeing the whole amount of details that we normally see, um, and then we can decide if we want to talk about it and pull it out consent agenda. Yeah, and I, and I think so. and I think that that's the clerk had pointed out that that's a discussion for for a different day. All we're doing is is putting it into the bylaw so that if we wanted to use it as a as a consideration, that it could be used as a consideration. So um, the the terms of what's in it uh, are included this discussion. Am I correct? And then paraphrase. Through the chair, that's very accurate. Um, this is just put in there so that we were able to utilize that in our committee structure for our committee yes. agendas. The discussion in regards to the actual consent agenda would be um, in a future report, probably in January, or February. For a procedural viral bylaw review. I did not want to bring that up to this committee in December because you guys are still getting your toes wet. I want to give you guys um, a month or two to get familiarized with the process a little bit before you go into that deep dive of discussion because procedural bylaw is uh, very detail oriented and it requires a lot of thought and a lot of consultation between the council and staff to get it where we want it to be. Yep. So if we okay. if we don't include it in this discussion, we it's not going to be there when it comes time to have that. It's fair enough. So as, as long as at some point before we start using it, we have a have deeper, deeper dive into it. That's, that's going to be there. Okay. Yeah, we don't necessarily have to so that it would be there. It's just that it's there. So we, yeah. Maybe if I may, Mr. Chair. Yes. Like a quick Coles notes version, consent agenda. So if you're looking at the, the agenda tonight. One, one item that might have been placed on the consent agenda would be the uh, 2022 year end review, where it's just sort of information. They're, 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 uh, so the same information would be presented. It's just typically where reports are being received, right? And if, there, if, there, if there's no need 
for a discussion, but it's just sort of received as uh, under consent agenda. We 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 would uh, uh, receive uh, item seven C, and let's for for for, for example for tonight uh, item seven uh, J under consent agenda. But if any member of committee felt the need at, at, at a certain point to say, oh, I'd like that pulled from consent agenda, then it would just be brought in and discussed at that time. That's the, that's the essence. It's not that uh, removing any of the documentation provided. It's just streamlining that if it's just information and there's really no, um, if, if there isn't a feeling that there needs to be any discussion on it, it's just received and you can skip over those items. Yeah. Further, further discussion. Yeah. I mean, usually committee has a pretty strong and fulsome discussion, uh, but if something got put on a on a consent agenda that anything that you wanted to to remove, you would you would just ask that it that it be taken off of a consent agenda uh, for a more you know fulsome discussion, or if you felt you know you had relevant new information to add to it, you would pull it off and have that. Otherwise, it just streamlines the process. I just put it down in the discussion. Yeah, put it into the discussion again. So, yeah. So, we, yeah. yeah. As the clerk indicated, we have a little more detailed a law discussion with respect to yeah. yeah. that. That's yeah, we sort of procedural by law. Cool. So, sorry. Yeah. yeah. And it's bigger. It's a much bigger discussion than it's procedural by law. Yeah, exactly. This is just setting up the, the template for that. So, I still have the chair. Yeah, yeah, we still, have the, still have big questions. You can have uh, the chair if you want. No. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, I guess we'll probably talk a bit more about the structures there of uh, committees down the road as well. Probably the same kind of conversation. So, I, I just uh, uh, I think this is formalizing the structure of the committees tonight. So, through the chair schedule D that we were briefly touching upon in regards to membership as well as the public library board. Um, as you can see, there's quite a few edits in regards to the committee structure in terms of reference. Is that what you're referring to? Yes. Or? yes. So we've uh, proposed some changes uh, incorporating um, non two non-voting members from each of our committee in the whole as well as creating a somewhat new committee where we're combining our previous Committee of Home for Administration and Finance as well as the Committee of Home for Public Works and Environmental Services and Facilities into one Committee of the Home for Administration and Operation. Um, this is hopefully to streamline the process a little bit more, um, give us an extra Monday to wiggle up potential future things around. Uh, updating uh, departmental jurisdictions to reflect the proposed changes for the Committee of the Whole for Administration Operations as well as uh, CDC. Uh, of course, with that change, it requires the removal of our old Committee of the Whole for Midfighting and Public Works and Environmental Services Facilities. I'll say that back as fast, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> As well as um, incorporating a limit of a maximum of three citizen appointees for the paid adjustments that reverting back to our previous term of reference, um, following some debate on that in previous terms, as well as uh, just setting a best practice for our uh, public library board. It was assumed to have six to seven members as far back as I can find. It was never actually set anywhere that that number was clearly defined. So now I'm just clearly defining that within the term. So that way, uh, 10 new people can't come down the road next year and all ask to be on the committee and we don't have anywhere to limit that. We don't want a committee of 20 people or a committee of two people. We have to have something. Usually we try to do odd numbers. So that way we can get an odd vote if we ever have an issue with more of more voting. Um, additionally, once we go through this in the future, you know, the next month or two or six months or a year, um, we will need to consider another terms of reference for the OPP detachment board model. Uh, that's still up there with uh, Solgen. Once we get all this finalized and it proceeds to council approval, um, then I do start the recruitment process and that uh, comes back to this committee. Future potentially uh, administration operations. 
uh, for review of all the applications before it goes to council by law or permits. And would that be sorry? Would that be January that we'd be looking at, at that, or is that going to be February? I through the chair, it really all depends on what the recruitment and uh, responses. Um, ideally, as soon as this passes at council, I'd like to get this in the newspaper as quickly as possible um, for review in towards the end of January. But it is Christmas yeah, holiday sure, season, yeah. so I don't usually expect a high response. Um, earliest anticipation date would be end of January, but most likely February. Okay. We could expect when we begin CDC in February. I assume we could our first meeting for CDC in February as we would have our committee members back again, our new chair in place, and and be ready to go. So I'm sure that would be ideal if we can get all the recruitment completed by the end of January for appointment. If not, there may be a slight delay by a month. Again, it, it's we advertise on our website, social media, newspaper. We ask all of the council staff to share the posts. But I I, I can lead a horse to water. <laughs> <laughs> last but not least, go ahead. Not very last, actually, for anybody. Comments, comments. So, um, I've just been to several committee meetings along the way, uh, not just CDC but others, and some of them can be quite long. It's probably touching on the procedural part of it more than so. You know, a Cole's notes answer maybe would suffice for uh, if we have an agenda for let's call it the mega committee year, um, that is quite long. <laughs> We have contingencies in place to be able to push some of that into another special meeting or something in that month, I'm assuming, or something like that. So through the chair and under our procedural bylaw, uh, any member of the committee or council can make a motion to refer that or defer it to another committee, especially if we're already maxed out, it's 11 o'clock at night, it's going to be another half an hour discussion, we can always refer it to the next committee meeting and if you post it on that agenda for the discussion. I think to know, though, that it, it you know, when we discussed this at, uh, at a prior meeting, this was a staff recommendation mm -hmm. to help us streamline uh, the process. It wasn't a council recommendation. It was it was actually a staff recommended process. They're the ones that handle those items. I trust in the fact that, you know, what, what they're recommending to us, uh, they, they know their schedule. They know what we can accomplish in meetings. Yes. Uh, I trust in the fact that, you know, they're going to do that part of the job. Our, our part of the job is to make sure that we have good, timely. Yeah, absolutely. As well as what it's just, for sure. So, so I'm just concerned about sometimes, sometimes we've had those long meetings that, uh, you know, we have I, I, decision. I'm concerned about what I read in other places as well, but I think I trust my staff and and I, uh, I let them, I, I let them and trust their record. So. <clears throat> um, further, further comments. Committees. Nothing. No. no. You're happy with everything. No. no nothing to change. No. no. Councilor Martel. I'm good right now, thank you. Uh, where are we then? So through the chair, if uh, you're okay with me updating that minor change of schedule D for the membership in regards to the council rather than the mayor. Um, if everyone is support of the rest of the changes, then we can proceed to recommendation. The update will be brought forward to the December 12th council for approval. Just trying to find the recommendation. Sorry. Two, two, two. Yeah, it is not there. Three, two. The committee recommends. My glasses on. Uh, the committee recommends that council accept the proposed changes to the terms of reference as attached and draft and draft staff. Right through the chance with direct staff and direct staff. So a little housekeeping change there for that. That word draft will be changed to direct. Staff to prepare the final bylaw. Um, further comments, further um, make sure you're comfortable with everything that's in there first. So, as far as consent agenda, it's just approving that, that it could be considered. It's not a term to reference for or anything yet. Um, very easy to change, very easy to not use. Um, 
I want to make sure everybody's comfortable with this first before I call the question or before I ask for a mover and a second. So there are some changes there. I want to make sure that, that all council members are comfortable with this with what's there. So we haven't heard from a couple. So well, if I may, my, my only concern, I've spoken to this before, and I think the council award sort of alluded to it is we're trying to jam two meetings into one. And it, but it's as the mayor just said, it's not written in stone forever, right? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We say, hey, we tried, it was fine, but let's go back to the other way. Mm -hmm. um, good with streamline is good. Okay. Is it noted? Good. good. Yeah. Yeah, no, the consent doesn't bother me a bit. Okay, so somebody move it. It doesn't bother me either. Somebody, somebody needs to move it, somebody needs to second. So moved by Count, uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Steve Dillabaugh and seconded by, uh, no, I was looking at Joe first. Uh, <laughs> sir, Joe Montel. Uh, all, all in favor then? Unanimous. Okay. So no more terms of reference. All right, looking at the next one. Um, I assume, Clark, you are going to speak to this one as well? Yes, thank okay. you. Through the chair, um, again, after discussions with our current council, uh, staff reviewed the current uh, practices uh, for both staff and council members to determine if we can find any other efficiencies uh, achieved through eDrive software. Um, after consultation and many, many meetings with uh, eDrive, um, we were able to come to the conclusion that the addition of the bulk manager also incorporated within that is the request to speak, request to speak module, and the uh, pro iPad application licensing. So this includes um, electronic participants, all of you have new iconics that you're able to utilize. Um, and this will allow electronic voting within the iPads to uh, recommendations as you see here tonight on all of the action items as well as all future um, resolutions and bylaws. Um, so this will streamline it where you're no longer going to be having uh, hundreds of pieces of paper on your desk you have to sign off on. You'll be able to do that right on your iPad as soon as I open up the module uh, to open the vote. Those members are able to select that they want to move in second post. Um, and then if there's any amendments, I do it live on our computer. It goes to the iPads. Everything is done live in time. It also helps uh, producing minutes in the long run. Um, additionally, with this uh, vote manager, it does offer a request to speak option. So if, for instance, um, we do go down the path of incorporating electronic participation again for any reason, um, this option for anyone that is participating electronically for our council members, they can click the button, highlight that they want to request to speak, and the chair of that committee gets a notification. So that way it'll pop up on their screen and hopefully they aren't overlooked or missed in the discussion. It just helps the uh, process flow a little bit easier. Um, so that way the person on the TV is not waving their hands like crazy trying to get someone's attention. Um, all of the votes are done in real time, as well as um, additional features, um, rather than declaring uh, your declaration of interest by a piece of paper. Uh, for the first little while, I will probably appear on to continue to do that until they're comfortable with the software. Um, but they are working to develop a declaration of interest right on the iPad app as soon as I open the meeting to start conducting it. You're able to go in a uh, couple minutes beforehand, fill that all out, submit it. I receive it, paperwork is done, and you don't have to do anything else there as well. And it goes right to my system, so I can probably share to the public. Um, more open transparency, basically, in those cases. Um, additionally, with the Pro App system, um, more things to help utilize and make your meetings a little bit more efficient for the review. Um, you're able to access everything once we publish it as staff on the end. So Thursday or Friday's afternoon, you'll open it up. I'll give everyone a tutorial as to how to utilize this in the future. Um, but you'll be able to make notes, comments, um, highlight, mark up, and pencil tools, underline, strike out, view um, notepad um, annotations, as well as search for it in the reports. Um, another fun feature that they actually just um, incorporated was. If we get off topic 
swirl down the road and um, someone's lo lost track of where they are in the meeting with me having administrator mode. Um, I will be clicking through each item as we go through it to open up to that next item. And you can click a fun little button that's called follow mode and it will pull you exactly to where I am. So that way if you're 10 pages off, it'll pull you back to that correct location. Just a quick question. Will it be on the screens then as well? Uh, through the chair, I have to incorporate it differently because right now we have the video recording, but we can utilize that and just have the video recording in the background. Um, the only time where that would be complicated is if we have a delegation or presentation. Um, they need more to see, but we can work out logistics, especially if we'll be doing renos down the road. Hmm. They'll be more time to be available for us. That's yeah. cool. It'd be it'd be neat if it was. Uh... It will definitely be something to utilize. Um, okay. Practice makes perfect. Perfect. In those yeah. cases, we'll have a lot of uh, learning curve, but for the most part, it seems like a very straightforward system. Um, one interesting feature um, that again that they've just developed is for individuals that uh, attend multiple municipalities, counties that uh, utilize the system as well. They've now created a bookmark feature. For you or all that's inputted, you can bookmark it and then open up whatever one you're going to utilize in that day. That way you don't have to move it anywhere else. It's still a little bit complicated. It's, a place to open. it's frustrating when you save it in your history. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's just very much of the edge of different uh, options that we have with those two uh, modules, but it does. I hope it increase a lot of efficiencies for the committee members, sort of council members, committee members will not have access to this. They'll have to follow along with the regular agenda package. It does cost um, $100 per user. So we are dedicated this right now to our council and a couple of selected staff members. So uh, I've seen far too many, I, I often up here from my uh, boss, Many times about how much software licenses cost every year, and you sold this about 15 times over. So please don't research anymore. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to go down the rabbit hole then. Um, so the we're buying the pro app uh, for each person that needs it, so they'll have access. So for the charity for the five council members, CAO, myself, and one other senior manager. Okay, and so so at the county when we use it. My access isn't through the pro app, it's through the standard app. So I don't have all of the capacity that that you're describing. But would that be a possibility for committee members? Or does it cost is there still a cost for the standard app as well? So through the chair for the standard app, that is free if you have an iPad. So members, future uh, committee members, if they bring in their iPad, I can set that up for them, provide them with the URL and provide them with a secure password. Um, that's very straightforward or very easy. Um, as you're aware, it, it's reviewing the agenda and that's it and making yeah. comments. Um, but for committee level that are uh, just citizen advisory, that should be sufficient. Um, if they don't have an iPad, um, it does make it trickier because I can't grant them my back end access. Um, that would be very inappropriate that they see what yeah. I see. <laughs> um, but for any members that do have an iPad, we could utilize that for a free version just to get them familiarized with the system and see if they like that or prefer just using the PDF by email or each yeah. email that's available on our website. And, and the, <laughs> the app, I'm assuming, it does, doesn't have to be iPad Pro. It doesn't, it'll work on any other. I'm sure any iPad and not that. Uh, Anything that's Mac that can download these apps. Yeah. Um, not available in the, not available like in Play Store or anything like that. It has to be in App Store. Um, it has to be an iPad. Through the chair, they are working on other options, um, but currently their app is uh, programmed specifically for Mac products. They are working um, with Android and Microsoft to make it more user friendly. Um, but right now they are having some difficulties with the different companies to get it working the same way it would that they have for the iPad. It's a slick program. It's, it, fast. it's a lot easier. I have tried using it on a Microsoft device. It, it's very funky. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for any committee members that aren't familiar with a system like this. Um, just giving them the simple free app would be more beneficial to them. Right. Yeah, for the number. Okay. Okay. Good. 
I think that's it for me. Sorry. I know I'm not supposed to comment, but I can't hear it. Um, Deputy Mayor. Um, I just have the one. We do have uh, a training session, I guess. Is that right? Uh, through the chair, once this is approved, and I inform our eScribe uh, contacts, they've already provided me with a demo. Right. And uh, I have that demo recorded with uh, a lot of questions already answered. So I can run through that with all of all the council members on an individual basis. And it's, it's very, very straightforward. The hardest part will be um, going through all of your little comments and notes and remembering what you said, but the private section is great for that, as well as everyone getting comfortable once we actually go live with this process to remember to actually go on your iPad. You still have to indicate that you're going to be the favorite seconder. You just have to remember to do that in the iPad and then I'll produce it on my end. I knew you would have that covered. Yeah. <laughs> so just Same a question, point. just a question regarding the motions, because we always have them on our desks. We always sign them uh, in advance of a, of a meeting. Um, and and then they all get passed over and they all get blocked here for you to try to shuffle and sort through. So this will prompt our screen then. You know, it'll automatically prompt a screen on everybody's screen and will it will pop that that item right up so that we can we can see it. Is that how it works? It will be a, an icon saying it's open to vote. Yeah. And then the individuals, it will show so whatever the motion is, whether it be a recommendation from a report here or resolutions from council, it'll pop up as soon as I activate it on my end saying that this is an active discussion voting option. You guys will be prompted for that. Anyone that can move or second it is able to unless you have to abstain from it due to a conflict of interest and you would not be able to actually touch that option at all. It will strike you out of that. So you don't have to worry about it, whether or not you're, you're seen as doing anything oh, cool. of the nature. That's good. So, so my last question would be, there are one, two, three, and I don't have mine tonight, four of us without pens to sign. How do we, how do we sign those? Um, do we actually chair, try to sign it reasonably with our finger or do we all need pens to do that? Through the chair, neither is needed actually, because um, I've already populated on my end, uh, we don't need to do this for the vote manager, but for every single motion, resolution, recommendation that's done in our minutes section and in our conduct meeting section, um, we basically have a drop down with everyone's names already populated. And that's what you'd be doing. You'd be clicking your name saying, yay your name. And then it would automatically fill in your name. Not a signature name, but a typed in name. Typed name, not your signature. And then, and then at the end, it would you would send them to back to me for signature to the chair um, i'm working with east Greg right now to develop that they don't currently have at the bottom a signature line uh, but they say by the end of the month they'll have that for me and either we can print that off at the end of the evening or like we're doing right now i can just email and do a digital signature yeah then that works that works good. everything will be peak yeah okay cool so it keeps us keeps us on our digital our digital model and keeps us working good at least at the big work can be fun, so. Good. I love this. So the members, as proposed, won't be voting members. True. Sure. So we won't have to worry about that for voting. Awesome. We don't want them to have a whole pile of paper. That's all. <clears throat> um, did you have more comments? No, sorry. I stole your time. Just a curiosity to the chair where are we on the, uh, the digital curve compared to our neighbors? How many other councils are? Using iPads, talking about paperless meetings, stuff like that. Through the chair, we're catching up in some respects. Um, COVID pushed a lot of other municipalities to go uh, fully digital and fully paperless um, way in advance of us. Um, so we are on the catch up mode of that. Um, we'll be one of the first in South Bremble to utilize the vote manager. Um, and the Pro iPad, some of them have the Pro iPad, but don't actually use Pro iPad for other than making notes. Um, so the vote manager will be the first in South Bramble to utilize it. I'm aware of one municipality in the uh, Leeds area that is looking to utilize it more closely. 
but not to the full extent, will be cutting the forward or disturbing the loose gravel area. Yeah. And and I, I I'll just add so so with the counties, the counties is using it now as well. Um, uh, and they're going to try it. It's not going to be full full. There are some some paper people still uh, at that level. But when it comes to huge documents like you know a budget binder that's like that thick, they still print, they'll they'll still print that so that you actually have a hard a hard copy. And I assume um, for anything we we could upon request uh, print print something. I know I like my budgets, uh, even the drafts. I like my my budgets in a I like them ring in a ring binder. I just find it easier than. Then on, I'd have to have two or three iPads on the go when it comes to those. So, so there are instances where, you know, even though we're trying to do everything digital, if you're uncomfortable with something, you just ask. Okay. 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 We're ahead. Prescott's making the effort. I, I talked to, uh, 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 Mayor Shankar this this past weekend, and they are everybody has their i everybody got their iPad, and they're they're all moving in the same direction as well. So, um, you know, there's always uh, there's there's always challenges, but I think that um, you know if we all work like we talk, about, we all work together, we can overcome them all. So, okay, um, we're still talking about whether we're going to do this or not. So. You talk? I want. Did you talk? I haven't heard you talk. Comments? No. No. You want to move it? Yeah. Move the recommendation? You want to read the recommendation? Uh, yes, okay. Uh, that the committee recommends that Council one purchase the pro application licenses for $800 annually and the vote manager request to speak module with an annual fee of $1,600 and an additional one time. $1,350 uh, for the implementation fee and two, authorize staff to execute the necessary modification to the services subscription agreement with eScribe Software Limited. So I have a mover for that recommendation. Is there a second mover? Councillor Wadi Smale seconds that recommendation. Is there further comments or conversation? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Yes. All right, so we will go to 11, which is necessity. And it's coming along as of what is it, Bill Bill 88? Is that what it what it is? I forget the bill number. That's correct, Mr. Chair. Um which is a uh, electronic monitoring policy. Do you do you want to speak to that briefly, CAO? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I, I will speak to it briefly. Uh, the requirement is the employers in Ontario with 25 uh, or, or more employees are required to have a written policy uh, in place disclosing uh, whether uh, and how they electronically monitor their employees. Uh, in full disclosure, um, I should have had this policy in, in front of council in, in, in October. Uh, it, it is a little late. But uh, nonetheless, it is in front of uh, council or our committee now and going to council uh, uh, next week. So uh, there really is not um, um, a great deal of guidance with respect to what it needs to be fully contained in that policy, other than the, if, you, if you are monitoring, um, tell the areas that you are monitoring. So, uh, in essence, uh, that's what we've accomplished. Through this uh, through this draft policy and uh, before committee tonight uh, with the recommendation that uh, uh, committee recommend that council adopt the written electronic peer monitoring policy as presented and the intent would be that um, um, uh, at some point uh, early in 2023 we would certainly be uh, having the first communications with, uh, with, with labor management in this uh, in, in this regard yeah. And just uh, if I may, just um, one quick, can you name like one or two instances where we monitor uh, presently uh, staff with, with electronic? Sure. So um, a good example would be uh, 
our, our buildings and facilities are uh, secure with, uh, with security codes. So I didn't, I, I didn't find uh, that we have the ability to pull that record to find it when, uh, when someone entered the building and when, when, when they left. And typically, uh, employees have a uh, unique uh, security code for, for, for those particular facilities. Mm -hmm. um, for, for, for instance, with, with, with respect to the vehicles, they are GPS and uh, they, they, they do monitor uh, where, where they're located, speed, et cetera. And in a, in, in a number of cases, I would point out uh, probably in, in, in both of those two examples, they've come in uh, to, to, to play for the uh, benefit of the uh, employee and the organization when uh, certain uh, uh, complaints have arisen uh, that, it, that, that the data has indicated quite the opposite to what the perception was. Um, certainly, there are some of the facilities that have uh, uh, video cameras. It's, it, it's noted that, uh, that there are video cameras, but you know, uh, naturally, if we're, if we're monitoring the, uh, the, the outside of one of our buildings, if a staff member is outside one of the buildings, they're actually being monitored. Thank you for uh, adding in those those uh, those items. I think it's worthwhile to know know that we've done it. We always do it. It's part part of daily life and daily business for the staff. But we now have to have a policy in place that that lets them know that we're actually doing that. Uh, to 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 share that is correct. We 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 certainly in the past the several years you know a, a GPS monitoring policy. Uh, also with respect to code of conduct, it speaks to it with with, with respect to. Uh, to emails and the use of those emails that that, that they very well uh, may be monitored. So um, I don't think it's anything um, new, so to speak, other than it's it's for it, 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 it's, it's formalized in a written uh, policy and it is complementary to the uh, uh, disconnect the work policy. It has to go to each individual member as well. It, it, it is required to go to each individual uh, employee within 30 days of it being enacted. And then if there are any changes or revisions, then uh, it needs to be distributed to, 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 to each and every individual. All right. So let's open it to, uh, that's good. Thanks for that. Uh, lots of information there on the, on the policy. So um, uh, let's open it up if anyone has any comments or questions. I've already have my daughter's hit for it. I mean, it's, it's standard. I mean, I know that work with everybody as well. And, uh, you know, the only thing they always say is they're a good angle and we'll grab it. And I'm pretty sure they'll do that as well. So, so mm -hmm. much moved. Comments before? Just uh, to you, I mean, who actually has access to this information? So, uh, what can anybody who knows where the grader is? Who has access to say, I can tell you where the grader is right now? Can anyone on staff go in? So, uh, through the uh, th through the chair, uh, the, the individual would be uh, uh, most likely our um, uh, manager of park tracks and facility, and our public works manager would have um, uh, access to, uh, to to where those units are. But typically, um, even for myself, I wouldn't have. Uh, Access to where those particular units are. Most of most of the information is seen uh, with the uh, um, security systems. It would be it would be through either Falcon Security or SecureWay. They would have that data, and it would be upon a request of either uh, myself or our manager. Uh, should should a, a situation arise, uh, and in certain cases that. Uh, um, a, a, a report would be uh, generated on a monthly basis just to sort of have that uh, have that information on file. Thank you. Sounds fine. Good. Uh, okay, so the recommendation uh, as written is that committee recommend that council adopt the written electronic monitoring policy as presented, and it was moved by Deputy Mayor Dillabaugh. I need a second for that. Uh, seconded by Councillor Wadi Smail. Is there any further discussion? Mm -hmm. The comments. No oh, good policy. Good, to, good to get it in place in uh, in time. I hate to see that fine uh, that fine things. So, um, uh, call the question. All in favor? And moving on. Let's talk about some sludge. <laughs> um, Spencerville uh, uh, Seven J, the Spencerville Lagoon Sludge Survey. 
uh, report. And I assume that this one is director of operations that will speak to to this one. I'm through the chair on the uh, environmental services contract and hydro survey. So, completely a sludge hydrographic uh, survey of both lagoons, north and south cells. Um, the overall result is that um, both cells have low accumulation sludge with approximately 29% in the north cell and 34% in the south cell. Um, the survey is really important for two things one, to determine whether or not the lagoons need to be dredged, or two, um, to, to establish the estimated dry tonnage of sludge that would need to be removed if dredging were to be required. And the good news is uh, the survey indicates that we will, will not have to dredge the, the lagoons at this time. The uh, primary recommendation has been to remove uh, cattail vegetation that has accumulated around the lagoons, which it was done previously in the 2003. And we're, we're due to have that done. Um, they also recommend that we have another survey done in, in three years to establish kind of loading rate of uh, sludge accumulation within lagoons, and they'll be able to better forecast when dredging would be required. Um, we will be looking at, in 2023, obtaining budgetary estimates uh, to uh, contract a uh, a company to uh, remove uh, the council. Uh, that's likely going to be done in phases over years. And that's the only recommendation through? Uh, other than a, a, another survey in three years to establish that loading rate, because the, um, the dredge of the lagoons are very, very expensive. So this survey is important to, uh, like I said, to provide an estimated dry tonnage so that if we were to go to a tender in the future, that you'd have a pretty good idea what the cost would be to remove. Excuse my ignorance. I, I if if it was written in there, I forget, forget, but was it dredged at the same time? Yeah, so the buildings have not been dredged since 1989. So to have a um, well, so report right. uh, indicating that uh, uh, sludge accumulation is low in about 2005 to 2008, we added um, a shack to okay. which is a, uh, uh, helps to break down any organics. So I think that is slow in the rate of such accumulation in the cells. Nice. Excellent. It's a great report. Uh, are you sorry, are you finished? Yeah. Yeah, good. Great report. Thank you for uh, thank you for the outline. Um uh, open it to council before is there a recommendation of this one, guys? Or are you trying to scroll through? No, it's just for information, right? Through, through, through the chair, just, just information yeah. for, okay. for committee to receive. So we're receiving your report. Does anyone have any questions on the report? Any comments? It's all good news. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Eric and Claire, for the for fulsome, uh, fulsome report. Um, all right. So low left pumping station budget. This one is CAO. Thank, 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 thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chair. Uh, I can certainly have either the uh, director of operations or the uh, chief water sewer operator speak for the uh, uh, the budget. But long, long, long and short is that uh, the budget was uh, provided uh, by the before the end of September, I believe, yeah. to uh, uh, Greenfield Global for, uh, for 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 comment and feedback. It was proposing, I believe, a seven percent uh, uh, increase, and a lot of that has to do with the. Um, uh, additional uh, uh, pumping time and, and, and chemical additions that will be added because they will be uh, substantially increasing their um, uh, rate of flow on a daily basis. But uh, maybe I'll just uh, turn it over to, uh, to the director of operations or the chief sewer operator to, to give a little bit more detail. Uh, through the uh, oh, sorry, no, go ahead. Through, through the chair, um, the uh, part of the seven percent increases the proposed. Uh, Increase in cost of electricity with running two pumps and like uh, see the uh, grant said uh, the chemical usage. Um, also, we have um, we're looking at possibly renting a spare pump if they increase pump uh, production over the next uh, three or four months. Uh, due to supply chain issues, we haven't been able to uh, obtain a uh, pump rental at this point, but we've uh, budgeted that in there in case we are able to uh, rent a pump. We also have a, a screen repair that uh, we're going to be completing in 
spring of uh, 2023 at a cost of approximately $4,300.80. Sorry, 4,380. Uh, through the chair, just for, <clears throat> just for context, right now, the uh, operations with the current flows they have, they run one, one pump on lead and one on leg. So the pumps, one pump runs and it switches over to the other pump. <clears throat> with the increased flows, uh, with not they don't have the capability right now to put the, the new pumps in, the larger pumps. So what they're going to do is run two pumps constantly all the time. So that would increase the flow and, and plus the chemical to uh, keep the zebra under control. Yeah. Okay. Again, Mr. Chair, just one final note, just to, to, just so because we do have some new uh, members of the committee, but uh, the uh, the, uh, the 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 operating budget is fully covered by Greenfield Global. They're the uh, sole uh, revenue generator with respect to that budget. We pay a portion towards the pump, but the uh, for the budget for the capital upgrade. Yes, that is correct. And what we are approving is is the uh, is the recommended council approve the twenty twenty three raw water supply system the LLPS budget as uh, as presented. So you've all had a chance to see it. Um, is there somebody who wants to move that item forward? Moved by Councillor Wadi Smail and a seconder, Councillor Joe Martel. Is there further discussion on, on that at all, Councillors? Okay. <coughs> Hearing none, let's call the question. All in favor? All right, seven. Oh, which is the pre budget approval tentative for a five ton cloud track? To the CAO, who's going to be speaking to that? Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I anticipate that it will be the director of operations that will be speaking to this item. All right. To the director of operations, let's, let's go. To the chair, um, the purpose is to receive the authorization from council to proceed with tendering for a new five ton Panamax and plow truck to replace K5 the Florida Sports Fleet. Um, the pandemic's caused a lot of chain supply issues with many things, with trucks that are probably one of the worst things with chips and so forth. Um, there was some discussion in the last council about getting a T5 replaced, it's the oldest truck in the fleet. Um, uh, truck five is a 2010 international 7600 tandem axle truck. It's reached its full amortization and is considered to be poor condition for both age and mileage components. Uh, the estimated useful life of the plow truck in the township asset management plan is 200,000 kilometers or 12 years old. Truck five is uh, 219,000 kilometers as of October 31st and will be 13 years old in 2023. Uh, high level estimate for replacement of truck five is from three hundred fifty to four hundred thousand dollars. And once the pricing is received through the tendering process, the results will be returned to council for a perpetual award. Thank you, Director of Operations. Um, before we, well, we'll open up questions first. Okay. So, um, start on the second. Uh, I have one question or one request, I guess. I would like to uh, through the chair to maybe the to the operation manager or the uh, CEO. Would like to have a uh, an email or a letter uh, drafted and sent to uh, Peter Bell. Um, I think the last two or three times we had uh, a quotation or a tender. The only one we had was international. I feel that if we touch base with Peter Bell, explain that they have a service area in, in our township, would the sales department look into uh, doing that uh, tender for us? So that's my main request on that. To the to thank you, deputy to the CAO. Do we do we usually uh, when we issue a tender? I mean, there's lots of different ways to. Uh, access the tender, do we usually send it to specific um, dealers or how do we 
think that's what the deputy sent to. So, you. yeah, through 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 the chair, um, it, it varies on, on on certain tenders, but it, it certainly isn't uncommon that in, in a number of cases that we would we, we would send the invitation to um, uh, Finger and Peter Mill, um, and uh, International and Kemp Mill, and uh, potentially a few of the other other locations. Um, so that they're well aware of it, we uh, specify. Plus, in, in addition, putting it on the website, you know, et cetera. So um, the, um, the, the, the long and short of it is that uh, we, we, we try to get that well distributed, but the, the unfortunate part is that we can't, um, we, we, can't we, 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 we can't force a company to, 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 to submit a tender. Uh, oh. but, but we, 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 we will certainly give uh, um, adequate heads up to uh, um, to, to, to a number of those uh, suppliers. Yeah, um, but to the, to the deputy, with, uh, were you looking more for a regional manager that that gets to, or, or were you looking more for the dealership? No, I mean, uh, we have it right here at 2085 Chaney Road, I would think. If, if, if that letter is good enough, I, I'm fine with that. Just maybe, maybe we should go. Maybe we should go to the sales department of Eastern Canada. I don't know. I, I don't know either. I'm just I'm not sure how to what, where you want to. I just I just feel every year we only get the <laughs> tender has been lately for several years is international out in company. Nobody else, Peter Belt and Gap one name. I don't know. I just don't get it. We have three actually local dealers that see here in Peter Belt. All two in Ottawa and one here. So how come they're not interested? That's all. I don't know. I would, I'd like to see five networks. Uh, so yeah, through, through, so we, through, through the chair from, from, from the staff perspective as well, we uh, certainly uh, would like to see multiple vendors received as well. Uh, it, it is uh, it, it's, it, it's a little uncomfortable when, when, when there's only one mm -hmm. um, uh, bid submitted. However, you know, really, if we if, if we flooded the market and in, in, in the end there, there there is only one submission, that's what they that's what the market is dictating to us at that particular time. But um, so the deputy's we, point, we just want to make sure we're flooding the market. We we, we uh, yes uh, on on both uh, fronts, we want to make sure that the information is there. Yeah, yeah, it's overdue. Let's try to look at that. I just, oh, I just have one more question, if I may. Uh, yeah. Chair. Sorry, uh, uh, to the operation manager. It said that, uh, should get back to it, but anyways, it said that we, is that our asset management? is saying it's costing us $32,000 a year to operate that vehicle. I don't think we had $32,000 worth of expenses last year, did we? Or where was I? Through the chair, if I may, it's uh, it's the average over four years. Okay, over four yeah. years, it's been about thirty two thousand. Yeah, it's the second year. Okay, good. I thought I might have missed a whole year. That <laughs> oh, makes me feel better. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's an expensive okay. truck. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, thanks. Are you finished? Yeah. Thank you. But just the only thing I have is you know. It still has tires on it. So is it retired and it's gone, or is it retired and we use it in an emergency sort of that uh, after we look at new product? I guess is another question about that. Uh, through the chair, um, we look at all the options. It's always good to have a spare. Uh, if we end up with a heavy snowstorm and uh, we have a breakdown, it's always good, uh, maybe not the best truck to have, but to have a truck you know, and uh, to keep the, the roads clear until we can get the other truck up and running. So we'll just look at that when the time goes up at the condition it's in and uh, and the market and, and everything like that. Um, not sure what we would get for it. Uh, it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a couple. Um, and, and I'm thinking to the CAO or possibly the treasurer, um again it, it all comes back it's pre-budget what what are the uh it's in the two questions one would be that it, and i think you asked this already is that that it's in next year's capital asset uh, replacement part of the budget so uh, through, through 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 the chair 
this unit this, this unit is in the 2023 yeah. uh, capital budget. Yes, that is correct. Okay. And it, but it was in the long-term asset plan though, mm -hmm. replaced in 2023. Correct. Okay, that was a question. And um the funding source, uh, suggested funding sources for this, just so that I have it in my initial notes. Do we uh, know exactly what we're going to be utilizing the funding sources for for that contract? Um, through the through the chair at this time, I would not say that we have the exact um, uh, funding sources, uh, as we're not looking we're not looking for a pre budget, so to speak. We're we're, we're looking for um, approval to tender, so that we have. So that we have some funds in back, yeah. but we will see uh, over the next month uh, between the uh, treasurer and uh, uh, the public works department. We'll be looking at um, what, what's on there in determining uh, the sources of funding. And which leads me to my last question. You, you completely hit it, which is, uh, and we just hit it with uh, with the pool, uh, and finding that you know that tender coming in way, way, way above what what anticipated. Um, uh, number would be, and uh, I don't think it's unreasonable to think that we're going to find ourselves in a, maybe a, possibly a, a similar position. So um, that process would work much the same as as what we did with with, with the pool liner. We could uh, we put it out for tender. We we get the numbers. We like them. We buy one. If we don't like them. We wait, we deal with the truck that we have, or we continue with the truck that we have, and then we retender re at a later date. Uh, through, through, through the chair, uh, that would all, that would always be an option of council if they wanted to defer something like that. Um, but I think that um, if, if there's interest in tendering uh, the, um, the, the project, I, I, I believe that the uh, uh, the, the, the estimates between that 350 and 400 are, are, are pretty reasonable uh, to expect them, that, that, that that vehicle is going to come in and around that to turn break. <laughs> and that and makes sense. last one, and, and beating, beating the old dead horse, but um, uh, is there a chance to buddy up with with United Counties or or South Dundas or any of our municipal neighbors on a on a potentiality for for a, a, you know two or three trucks purchased uh, similarly at the same time uh, through the through through the chair uh, staff certainly will 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 look to see if uh, if, uh, if some of our neighbors <laughs> are at that same stage with respect to uh, the vehicle. Um, not sure if it will work in this particular circumstance. Yeah. But one, one, one of the nice things is that uh, as as, uh, as those conversations are generated, if uh, the um, five-year forecast looks like there's, um, um, for instance, uh, the township of Augusta, maybe uh, um, Sarah Dundas have a, a similar unit that they're looking to replace in, in 2025. And we have another unit that's due to be replaced in 2025. It may it, it probably makes sense to, to, to align where they, the, 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 the units are very similar. Uh, the county has some specialty uh, pieces uh, on their unit that it may not be as easy just to uh, partner in that circumstance. But that's so, so that, that is certainly something that staff that is, uh, is aware of. And, Okay. So the question or the recommendation as it's written is uh, the committee recommends that council direct staff to prepare and issue a tender for a new tandem axle uh, project. Uh, correct, Mr. Chair. The, um, the item that I just would say is that uh, what we don't want to be seen as as a municipality is that we go out for tenders all the time and we don't, don't accept it or we defer. So that's why we're trying to get this information. This is the, this is the price range uh, anticipating that based on a, a on a rough number that has been provided, but we don't know what we're getting. Is that number provided in the tender document? No, that, that number is not provided. Is Obviously, if it, if it wasn't, <clears throat> the price was less, they could bump up. But it, it, it is not. Um, we just want to be um, committed to be aware that's um, 
um, a higher price for a a, a plow truck than than what was just uh, a, a couple of years ago. Yeah, the last one was two fifty. No, no, no. So it was. Uh, I believe. I, I believe it. I, oh, it was two. Is that I believe. I believe it was around two eighty range. By all when all in from two twenty. Three twenty all in. Yeah. And is this an all in price? Would be all in price. <clears throat> okay. Oh, sorry. I just um, wanted to know. Uh, I'm quite sure that there's a quite lengthy process of getting a truck right, but if you can just can't go to the store and get one, I could be on a type of a week. I don't know if you're thinking about putting off what we did the pool. Gonna do hand shot at the time you get a truck. Yeah, well, the, I think the idea is that we would get it for next December, correct? So, the, so, so, so through the chair, uh, depending on when the uh, when, when, when the prices come in, um, I, I anticipate that would be uh, very good. Maybe I the chair for eight times or about 18 months. 18 months at this point. Okay. Point. So now we get a year and a half. June of 2025. Wow. Okay, all right, let's get on it. Yes, yeah, let's get on it. Okay, so then the recommendation I'll read it one more time is that the committee recommends the council direct staff. I guess every minute counts here. Uh, that committee recommends that council direct staff to prepare an issue of tender for a new tandem axle drive. The mover by uh, Council Bonnie Smale, seconded by Councilor Chris Ward. Any further comments or discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous again, pre budget approval for tender. All right, number eight, uh, councillor inquiries of notices of motion. Does anyone have any inquiries or notices of motion? Let me start at the left side. Mr. Martel, and then Councillor Dillabaugh, the Deputy Mayor Dillabaugh, there's my dollar. Nothing. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Moving on to number nine. You're going to love me. There is no mayor's report tonight. Uh, number 10, we do have Mr. Davis in the uh, in the audience. Thank you for, for being here. I appreciate it. I have a question. Uh, and I'm about to get there. Um, <laughs> it's nice to actually have someone at, at the meetings. Uh, there's nobody online. So uh, if you have any questions that pertain to uh, tonight's um, agenda or anything on uh, tonight's agenda, prior uh, away. Can I read this? To the chair, in regards to question period, is it still the policy that you can only discuss or ask questions when what is on the agenda? Uh, I believe I, I'm going to look to staff for that, that answer, but I don't believe. Uh, when do we discuss that? The chair that was updated in 2019. So, but we didn't have a procedural discussion in January, February. I mean, we anticipate that the procedural will continue back in January, February. So, we, we as of right now, uh, it has to, it, the questions have to pertain to what is what is on the, the present uh, agenda. Um, if you're making a suggestion that we, we consider it, it's been noted to all of us at this point. That, well, uh, that's why I bring it up. It's changed during the meeting in 2019. We asked the only thing that was please. If you want to increase the uh, um, community involvement, having something where they've got to sit and try and get something to put on the agenda to ask a simple question, you're never going to get the involvement. Well, I'd like to see personally and go back to the way it was before eating okay. Good question. I, I noted. Question. Noted. And do you have another one or is that the other one? That's the only one. Oh, yeah. So, so to, to just a oh, good point. Yeah. So, um, I believe that, that there is uh, members of council. That, that are planning to, um, uh, I'm not exactly sure on the time frame yet or, or when it'll start, but for every week, there, there is a plan in place where, or it's going to be in place where uh, members of council, one of them will be present to, to, to listen to concerns 
uh, for I don't know if it's an hour that you're planning or two hours, but to listen and take take questions and concerns. They're planning on doing that every Friday afternoon or early or late morning, something like that, so that we hope to increase um, uh, that discussion and that hopefully that'll bring some things back to add to our agendas and and you know increase the transparency. So. Um, I forgot about that. Thanks for reminding me. Uh, but there will be a group that'll do that, and they've committed to doing it every Friday for for a period of time to see the uptake. You will this be something you put on the uh, on the way of saying this for people that are yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once once they once it's moved and and it's and it's brought through as a process that we're going to try, then um, we we will we will make sure that we bombard bombard the media, the social media, that sort of stuff with with information on how to uh, how to access it. It's not really a discussion, but yeah. Good. Right. And I'm going to note no closed session. So the next one is I need a mover for the adjournment, moved by uh, Councilor Joe Martel and yeah. seconded by Councilor Wadi uh, Smale. And all in favor? Done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>